but she would also have the opportunity to teach other physiotherapists and emergency professionals as well. Because of this, the McKinley Hospital had always been her first choice when she was researching potential transfer places, and it appeared that she had been theirs as well. As a sign of their commitment to her, six months earlier they had flown her over from the U.S. completely free of charge so that she could meet the staff and explore the area which might hopefully become her new home a little bit better. Sarah had jumped with joy at the opportunity to do so. Her mother may well have been Australian, but she herself was New York born and bred, and apart from a little time spent in Miami for her studies, she had never strayed far from her home city. As Joan returned to her patients, Dr. Kelly James, who ran the trauma unit, walked in. "'Hey, Sarah,' she said. Kelly had looked after Sarah incredibly well during her short introductory stay, and even volunteered to spend a full weekend with her exploring the area, showing her all the best beaches, introducing her to her favorite food outlets and coffee shops, and a particularly relaxed and welcoming lesbian bar. Even though Sarah was not really into the bar scene, she was delighted to realize that there would be a strong community of women in McKinley who she could really feel at home and be herself with. Kelly was definitely one of them, and the two women became fast friends. "'How's the new house?' Kelly inquired now. "'Settling in okay?' Perfect, Sarah replied. It was wise advice he gave me to start house hunting before I even flew back to New York to sell my apartment and work my two weeks' notice. I don't tend to give that, Kelly said with a satisfied grin. Sarah chuckled. It was strange how quickly she had come to regard Kelly as such a great buddy, and she was surprised, too, at how rarely she even thought about New York and her old job, which included her network of non-supportive friends— none of which had bothered to send her a single email to say hello or find out how she was doing. It was probably for the best, and definitely not a problem for Sarah. Of course, forgetting about Lee was proving a little harder to do. It was a subject that Kelly had wasted no time grilling her about one evening shortly after they had met. "'You get this faraway look in your eyes from time to time,' she said. "'Got someone on your mind, Sarah?' Sarah admitted to her that she genuinely missed her ex-girlfriend at times. "'Although I'm not sure exactly why,' she reflected with a light shrug, "'especially seeing how it all turned out so badly in the end. "'Maybe you just long after the idea of a romantic relationship,' Kelly remarked. "'Nothing wrong with that, you know?' Sarah nodded. She certainly did not miss the hurtful notion that she had always been surplus to requirements in the other woman's highly successful and efficient life. She smiled at Kelly as her new friend poured her more wine and asked about her ex. "'Oh, she was all kinds of gorgeous and charming,' Sarah said, with a trace of sadness in her voice. "'I found her quite impossible to resist, at least in the beginning of our tumultuous relationship.' She explained how Lee was a gifted young surgeon, a rising star at one of Boston's most prestigious medical institutions, a woman who was as ruthless, driven, smart, and ambitious as she was beautiful. A few risky drinks one evening after their late shift had quickly led to a lot more serious engagement, and Sarah had fallen deeply and painfully in love with Lee. After several months of passionate back and forth between the two, it had even reached the point where she had considered sacrificing her own career and moving over to Boston for a less interesting job, just to be closer to her lover. "'But one day I walked in on her naked in bed with another woman,' Sarah said, and Kelly winced. Lee loved her job, and she loved sex. Period. Turns out whether that was with me or someone else didn't really matter to her. To her credit, she did not try to deny it when I confronted her about it. "'I'm sorry, Sarah,' Kelly said to her in a quiet voice. "'It's okay, really,' Sarah assured her. "'In a way, I am grateful to her for being so brutally frank. It hurt to hear Lee say it, for sure, but in the end it led me to Australia.' Over a few days off work following their quiet breakup, in the middle of a particularly fierce New York winter storm, Sarah had grasped the opportunity to take a long, hard look at her life. On the surface, everything was great.